causing a financial crisis, going into crippling debt, and somehow doing all three Arco Nexus quests in about five minutes. Because today in RimWorld, we'll be breaking the vanilla expanded trading mod, which adds banks, contracting, and an entire stock market with a dynamic economy, of which we're going to use to crash the market. Uh, I'm the Grim Cleaper, and before we get into the video, consider subscribing to the channel. In doing so, you too can help cause the next financial crisis, so we can laugh at the bankers on Wall Street while standing in a bread line. Anyways, let's get into the video. Now we're going to be doing Doing this on losing is fun and commitment mode with everyone's favorite storyteller. We also want to start somewhere that's in close proximity to lots of different factions because we want to be able to trade with all of them really easily. I'm also not going to be using the ideology system because it's not really all that necessary. In terms of our colonists, we really want intellectuals. So we have two intellectual passion people right here and then one person who's just good at the other stuff that we need. So in starting the game, this is uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, I don't normally play on flat biomes, but this is all right for that. Now, like most mods in RimWorld, for us to really get going, we need to get down the research tree. The main thing we need is microelectronics because it unlocks something called the trading terminal, which allows access to banks, stock markets, price overviews, and contracts. But we really just care about the banks. But it also has some mechanics that allow us to absolutely destroy the economy of this game, of which we're going to be doing as soon as possible. Now we have the first piece of our base set up, but we do need to actually make sure we don't die until we get to microelectronics. So most of you probably realized by now that I don't generally build kill boxes all that often. The the reason is almost entirely laziness because I always think that I can defend my colony without one and then I die. So we're not going to make the same mistake as that. I'm also just going to grab batteries before we get microelectronics just to have consistent power. Caravan animals wander in. That's a bunch of Indian elephants. <laughs> You have two silver on you. I assure you, with what we're about to do, we are going to have far more than two silver. I'm also just going to exclusively grow rice because we're not going to be here long enough for corn to make sense. So right now, due to vanilla trade expanded, we actually have a whole lot of events that are happening in the world right now. The thing is, we can't see them. Part of what the trading terminal does is it allows us to see world news as it pertains to the stock market. These events can be things from someone selling a bunch of weapons, which decreases their price, or buying up a ton of leather, which increases that price. So so while we can see a market value on different items right here, that's not necessarily the price that everyone will pay for that item. So we just got batteries, and now we're going to go ahead and try to get microelectronics as fast as we can. So as long as we get it before we die, which should be pretty easy considering I'm almost done my kill box, we'll be okay. Also, I usually see lots of different designs for choke points and stuff, but I find that this one is probably one of the best. You can basically line the top with fences and then the bottom with spike traps. And because the AI knows that climbing over fences is slower, they will all always just go straight through the spike traps, but your colonists will climb over the fences to rearm stuff. Now we got a wild woman who wandered in. Her name is Yolanda Perkins the Bookworm. I don't know why that reminds me of JK Rowling. But we are going to go ahead and try to tame her because, you know, eight intellectual, seven cooking, and four construction. This is actually really good for what we're doing. Uh, wait. Oh my god. We got her in one go. For a second, I thought that was revenge. What were the odds of that anyways? That was like a 6% tame chance or something. Oh my god. Okay, well, that's insanely good, because now our research speed is going to get doubled, and our construction as well. Uh, oh, okay. Right as we get a raid. Okay, this one's actually two people, which is a little concerning. Yolanda doesn't have any weapons, but, you know, her meaty body will suffice. Okay, here's to hoping that these guys don't absolutely kill us. Well, no, that's, that's not going to happen. Yolanda's luck Luscious hide is just gonna block people. What? That was a one shot to the heart. It was just, it was just, okay, that, that's really cool. And wouldn't you know, that was our main intellectual person and mining person, so we are screwed. Not really. We do have Yolanda who can kind of replace him, but that still really sucks. Uh, an Animus Vox is hunting, w oh no. Well, Beck, uh, I, I don't really think I can help this thing much. I, I think you're just gonna have to watch your best friend animal die. Well, Welch, we gather here today at your funeral to say how did you get one shot by an axe to the heart? All right, so our box is pretty much done, which should keep us safe until I get microelectronics for... I mean, we're, so we're a sixth of the way there, but our main researcher did die, so we just need to wait a little bit longer. Oh my god, I just noticed there's like four guinea pig corpses in my stockpile. What is this, like a four-year-old's pet cemetery? Uh, I remember my first guinea pig. Strange how he lived for 20 years. Okay, we got another raid, but I'm not really all that worried. It's it's degraded to only one guy, but I'm pretty sure I could just fast forward and do absolutely nothing. Yeah, okay. And Chris here kind of sucks, so I'm just gonna strip him and ignore that he is uh, even here. Man, Chris is such a 
a good colonist. Let's just sit here and watch him be a great colonist for another, I don't know, three more hours. Hey there, Chris. Uh, no, no hard feelings, right, buddy? All right, so we're nearing the finish line of researching microelectronics, not to be mistaken for the Swedish line. All right, so we just got microelectronics, so we're gonna want to build the main stuff that we need in order to actually use it, which is a trading terminal in a comms console. All right, and with the trading terminal done, now we can go ahead and take a look at what exactly does this mod entail? So the first thing we have is that we can take a look at all the prices here. Now, these are the prices of every single item in the game. Some of them you might notice don't make a whole lot of sense, like this zone decal. They're not really items that you can get normally, but all of them do have prices that, as you can see on the right side, do vary pretty significantly over time. The next thing we have is to check out the news. Over here, you can see Kiwa Traders posted a mediocre earnings report, Liner Solutions has posted subpar earnings and terrible earnings, yada yada. And the next thing we have is the stock market. Here, if we scroll through, we have a whole bunch of different stocks that we can invest into. On the left side, you can see how much it costs for us to buy shares. And then on the right, we can actually mark whether or not we want to follow the news of any individual stock. The fourth menu is the contracts menu. Now, this one is a little bit less straightforward than the others, but basically all of these are different contracts that we can fulfill. So if we went ahead and made one simple prosthetic arm, we could sell it for 200% the price that it normally is. And the same goes for all the other items that are right here. We can also put forth our own contracts by selecting an item of many, many, many different items. And after that, I can specify the reward. So if I throw an extra zero on there, now we are paying $11,000 in the hopes of someone giving us a minigun. The higher the markup is and the longer the contract lasts, the higher the chance of our thing actually being fulfilled. And because you can request for pretty much any item in the game, this system is really, really useful. Now, those are really cool mechanics, and I'm really happy that they're all added to the game. However, we don't actually care about any of those as it pertains to breaking the game. The last two options are to contact the Bank of Bandalinor and to contact the Imperial Bank. Both of these are identical, but if I choose the Imperial Bank, now we have this whole menu. And this menu right here is how we deposit money and take out loans. Based on our goodwill with the owner of the bank, so if we're here right now, it's the Empire, we do have a ton of fees we have to pay. So by putting in $862, we only actually put in $689 and pay $173 in fees. Now, if you hate taxes half as much as I do, you're probably crying on the floor right now. 20% banking fees are absolutely insane. And this loan right here has 50% interest, which means we have to pay back an additional $2,500 on top of the original amount. But what if I told you that I don't plan on ever paying that money back? So if I go ahead and deposit all my funds into the account right now, you can now see that we have $689 on our balance. Also, the other loan options right here now are shown up because we have money in the account. The amount that we can borrow scales based off the amount that we have currently in our balance. So if I go ahead and take out this quick cash loan right now, now, and then I close the menu, you'll notice that we should get a bunch of money that drops right about now. Now, if we go back to the Imperial Bank, you'll notice that our local funds are once again 5,000, and then I can redeposit my money back into the bank. We do have to pay $1,000 in transaction fees, but if I click confirm and I put it in, oh boy. Because we have $4,600 in our bank right now, now we can take out more loans. So I'm gonna go ahead and take out a short-term loan right now, and then as soon as I unpause, we get more money. Then then I can go back to our bank and then redeposit that very same money into the account. And by doing so, now the long-term loan is even more. If I take out a long-term loan and then I go back to the bank and I redeposit that money, now I have $21,000 in the bank and I can take out a mortgage loan for $65,000. If I take out the mortgage loan, now I have even more money and I can go back to the bank and redeposit all of that money. With the money that we borrowed originally, I can now go ahead and actually repay this original loan. Now I can take out a new loan, which scales even higher, and I can keep repeating this process over and over and over again to continuously repay loans and get more money. And as you can see, things start to break down very quickly. Now I could just keep going back to the bank over and over and over again and continuously do this in order to get infinite dollars. Right now I'm sitting at somewhere between like, I, I don't know how much silver this is, but it is a crap load. You know, we were doing all right with our colony wealth, and then we hit the point where we just skyrocketed up to $5.8 million. Well, okay, having this much money is cool and all, but what do we actually do with it? Well, at this point, it's up to us. See, I can actually go ahead and open contracts and begin to just buy 
whatever items I want. So if I go ahead and try to buy, I don't know, like a plasma scatter gun, I set the time until the end to one, and I just throw the mark up all the ways to 10,000%, I can submit the contract. And basically, I can repeat this for any number of items I want because I have infinite money. The second thing that we can do is the very, very fun thing called the Arco Nexus. The Arco Nexus is a quest that requires you to get $350,000 in colony wealth in order to actually accept it. And by accepting the Arco Nexus quest, you basically sell your colony in order to get one of the Arco Nexus pieces. And because we have more than enough colony wealth to spare, as soon as I become allies with these people right here, I can just accept the quest immediately. So to do that, I am going to go ahead and try to walk over to one of their settlements and just take as much silver as I could physically carry. Now, you might be a little worried here. How exactly are we going to defend our colony with 5.8 million dollars? With this level of wealth, the size of raids is going to be absolutely ludicrous. Well, what if I told you that I could just make all of this colony wealth disappear? Now, I could go ahead and just take all of my money out of the bank and we are good to go. This will deposit the rest of our funds in our colony and now I can go ahead and contact the second bank. By doing this, I can throw all of my money into the second bank here and it is now gone. Now, I still owe something like $30 million to the Empire. I don't really remember. But who cares if I owe all this money to the Empire if I'm never gonna pay it back anyways? Oh, and even better, it looks like our contract on that plasma scatter gun is filled and I have a uh, $24 million in the bank right now. And I could just pay the whole thing off right now and look at that, we get our free plasma scatter gun. What even is this weapon? I, I honestly just saw and I thought, yeah, this might be pretty all right. Is it, is it any good? It, yeah, I mean, something tells me it's pretty good because the fire rate says infinity RPM. All right, so we arrived at this faction settlement, which means I can go ahead and just offer them some gifts and just chuck at them all the silver that we have. And now we're allied. Because we're allied, it's now possible to do the Arco Nexus quest so long as we have enough money. And to get enough colony wealth, all I have to do is go to the bank and pull out enough money to raise my colony wealth to 350. However, it is worth noting, when we do the Arco Nexus, we lose all of our research. That means that we can't actually build another trading terminal until we research it. Or at least it would if I didn't have a way to account for that with a lovely little item called a tech proof persona core. Now tech proof persona cores allow you to freely and instantly finish the current research that you're on. So if I go ahead and just submit a contract for one, I'll have one for the by the time I actually do the Arco Nexus quest, giving me the ability to instantly re-research microelectronics and build my trading terminal. And on top of that, I could also just go ahead and get three sets of cataphract armor, helmets, and all the best weapons in the game to prepare for my travel. And there we go. Now I can just confirm and we get the tech proof persona core for free, which is fantastic. And now surprise, surprise, the Arco Nexus quest is a go. And so now at this point, we have the Arco tech structure and we just need to go ahead and do that two more times and we win the game. I assume this is going to get fixed at some point in the near future, but even besides this, the entire mod is very well done and very, very good. If you enjoyed the video, consider leaving a like and checking out some of the other stuff on my channel that I have right here below. Thanks for watching. See ya.